from the forms of the great spiral galaxies. to the whirling electrical charges of the atom. To the intricate spiral of a coleanth shell. To the tube of a breaking ocean wave. The whirlpool, the vortex, is common at all scales and forms of nature. It turns and twists like a tornado, pulling everything around it into its path. A vortex forms when an obstacle impedes the flow of a medium. The Dhamma wheel represents the universal vortex of existence. It is the symbol of dependent arising. And dependent arising is the core structure of the Buddha's teaching. The Ticca Samuppada begins from ignorance, then Sankara, consciousness, name and form, six senses, contact, feeling, craving, grasping, becoming, birth, decay, suffering, and death. Then confidence, delight, joy, serenity, ease, concentration, knowledge, disenchantment, detachment, emancipation, extinction, and finally Nibbana. This is the Dhamma, Paticca Samuppada. And if there's any doubt about this, consider the Buddha's own words. Yo Paticca Samuppadang Pasati, so Dhamang Pasati. Yo Dhamang Pasati, so Paticca Samuppadang Pasati. He who sees the law of dependent arising sees the Dhamma. He who sees the Dhamma sees the law of dependent arising. Namaste and welcome to our new series on Paticca Samuppada, Dependent Arising, the core of the Buddha's teaching. Now, why do I say it's the core? Huh? Because actually everything else in the Buddha's teaching is built around it. It's also called the middle way, that any time a questioner came to the Buddha and said something like, gave him a, a two-pronged question, huh? is it like this or is it like that? Huh? Is it that everything exists or everything doesn't exist after death or whatever like that? The Buddha would say, no, no, I don't follow either of those extremes. I follow the middle path, which is, from ignorance, <laughs> sankara arise. From sankara, consciousness arise, and so on. He would invoke Paticca Samuppada. So Paticca Samuppada, contrary to the popular misunderstanding, is the middle path. It doesn't, the middle path doesn't mean that it's a compromise. The Buddha's teaching is a compromise. It's not, <laughs> not at all. The Buddha was very firm in his principles, but he told a story, a story about how each one of us becomes what we are and why we suffer. He had to tell this story to 
inform us of the nature of the trap that we're in, how it's constructed, how it works, because only with that knowledge can we get out, can we spring the trap and escape. So that knowledge is really the core of the teaching. Well, what about the Four Noble Truths? What about the Eightfold Noble Path? Huh? Yes, those are also important parts of the Buddha's teaching, but they're not the core. As the Buddha said in that quote, one who sees Paticca Samuppada sees the Dhamma. He doesn't say that about anything else, especially the Eightfold Noble Path, because the Eightfold Noble Path is a constructed thing. It's a sankhara, and the Buddha admits it. Check out this quote. This is the noble eightfold path, friend Visaka. Right view, right resolve, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Is the noble eightfold path fabricated or unfabricated? The Noble Eightfold Path is fabricated. Chula Veda La Sutta. So I have to give the Buddha tremendous credit and respect for being honest. How many teachers, if you ask them, is your teaching just a fabrication? How many would be able to admit it? No, most of them say, no, this teaching is the truth forever and ever. <laughs> Eternalism, isn't it? They would defend it. But the Buddha says, no, it's a fabrication. Why? Because this is Kali Yuga. And in ages past, of course, there were other Buddhas. In fact, Buddha gives credit to a previous Buddha, Vipassi for discovering Paticca Samuppada. The Buddha is so honest, he has so much integrity, that he's able to admit that his teaching is a fabrication because, why? It's made especially for these times and the type of people that we are. Huh? It begins from right view and ends with right concentration or meditation. Now, how many people do you know that do it backwards? <laughs> they sit down and try to meditate before they have right view. What happens? Nothing. <laughs> Why? Well, they didn't follow the instructions. The Buddha says you have to have right view. Huh? And so many other things lined up in your life. And then you can meditate. Then you can concentrate and get right concentration. So the Buddha is very realistic. Huh? He's very honest, and I appreciate that so much. So anyway, there is a correlation between the Four Noble Truths and Paticca Samuppada. And here it is. The Four Noble Truths, the truth of suffering, the Noble Truth of the cause of suffering, the Noble Truth of the path to the end of suffering, and the Noble Truth of the End of Suffering. These are the Four Noble Truths, and as you can see, there's a group of stages on Paticca Samuppada that correspond to them. Where does that leave us? <laughs> well, Paticca Samuppada is a story. It's a story of how we got ourselves into the situation that we're in. It's a story that begins in the interval between lives, when the gross body has fallen away and all that's left is the subtle body, the mind, the intelligence, and the ego. And we saw how a vortex is established when there's an obstacle in the flow of a medium. Well, nature is a medium, and nature has a certain flow. It goes from gestation to birth to growth to production of byproducts to dwindling and death. That's the natural flow of nature. We see it everywhere we look. But the ego doesn't like that. 
<laughs> the ego says, no, I want to exist forever. <laughs> and so when the gross body drops, the ego begins to make plans for a new body. How does it do that? Through ignorance, <laughs> through desire. It desires to enjoy certain pleasures and it desires to avoid suffering and it desires to be an individual, which is delusion. Uh, so these three kinds of ignorance, positive desire, negative desire and delusion lead the ego to make plans, to make ontic commitments, sankhara. And these go against the flow of nature. Huh? Nature, by nature, is <laughs> impermanent, suffering, and not self. These are the natural qualities of existence. But the ego says, no, I want something permanent, a permanent identity, permanent existence. Huh? eternal life <laughs> and I want to enjoy I don't want to suffer and I want a self I want to be somebody so the ego's whole effort is against the flow of nature see this is the obstacle that creates the vortex of the body and mind so here we are trapped in this whirlpool spinning around and around. Huh? Have you noticed it? You go through a certain succession of moods or thoughts, and then it happens again and again and again. This is the mind, the whirlpool of the mind, the vortex. And every day you have to feed the body, you have to take care of it in so many ways, otherwise it becomes very uncomfortable. Huh? So, in the same way as the uh, obstacle in the flow of water creates a vortex, the ego, by its effort against the flow of nature, creates the vortex of the body. So here we are, trapped in this vortex. How do we get out? Well, first we have to know the structure of the trap. And that's exactly what Paticca Samuppada is. It's the structure of the trap, how it works. And by knowing how it works, we can spring the trap and escape. And that's the second half of Paticca Samuppada, uh, the Eightfold Noble Path that shows us how to get out of this mess <laughs> and back to our natural state of Nibbana. So, I'm glad you tuned into this series. Uh, it's going to be a kind of a longish series because there's a lot of detail, a lot of stages to cover, 24 of them to be exact, and the interrelations between them. So we're going to go through in detail and examine each of the stages and how the whole thing works. And by that, understanding you'll not only be able to understand the Buddha's teaching so much better, but you'll be able to implement this like a mantra, like a magic spell to end all suffering. Buddha Saranaya.